Jesse is back with another book haul. This time we are going to be hauling one of my favorite genres and one of my favorite genres to read. I recently did a bookshelf reorganizing specifically so that I could access these books better. And what books are those? You might ask, but they are thriller and horror books. Love me a thriller. I don't know why I became a chicken just now. That's because I ain't no bitch, okay? I'm not a chicken. I can read these books. In this video, you're going to see me haul 20 books from the thriller and horror genres, beach thrillers. You are going to see just straight up horror. You are going to see racialized horror. You're going to see queer horror. You're going to see some horror fantasies. You are going to see some get out style horror, investigation thrillers, both YA and adult. There's going to be something for everybody. And those of you who are like, mm, I don't know, Jesse, I can't really stomach thriller horror books. Look, it's a spectrum, okay? But, and I might be about to put a book on your radar that's going to help you step outside of your comfort zone in a good way. Hang with me, okay? Stay with me the way that my father did not stay with the family. Now the first book is actually a soft DNF and that is While Justice Sleeps by Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams is one of the most prolific Black thriller authors out there. She is incredibly well known as an individual and is really well known for her political work. Stacey Abrams came out with this title which is a legal thriller. I love a courtroom drama because I am secretly an old white man on the inside. He's just bursting and waiting to come out. Waiting on his moment to stand on the top of a bar and sing old wham songs. You know what I'm saying? This is a legal thriller. Yo, what is on this? Is that curry? Why is it yellow? Ugh. Anyway, we're following a young law clerk whose life is in shambles. And honestly, I can relate. She is a clerk to this justice. I think his name is Wynn and he dies under mysterious circumstances. I'm sorry, he's not dead. He goes into a coma and everything about the coma is suspect. It's suspicious. She ends up having to go figure out what the hell happened to him. And it is a big conspiracy situation. You are being attacked by like a genetics firm, really, really intense and intricate. And I got about halfway through and I, we're not gonna talk about it yet because like I said, it's a softy enough. I'm, I'm probably gonna go back to it at some point. This is gonna be a good pick for those of you who like a good legal thriller, a legal drama, something that is really intricate, that is really smart, lots of riddles and puzzle solving. It reminded me so much of Dan Brown in Angels and Demons. Like it was that same kind Kind of vibe and i'm not gonna lie like i don't give a fuck if y'all think it's basic i loved dan brown's books in high school like i thought i was the smartest person in the world the most misunderstood person in the world reading angels and demons and the da vinci code before i was claw next up we have one of my new favorite thrillers of all time and that is the violin conspiracy by brendan slocum this was a highly anticipated release i went out and bought it it did not disappoint me we are following a young black man who finds that his family is in possession of one of the world's most rare violins. He ends up restoring this violin and going on competitions and you know working within the orchestra and he's experiencing profound extreme overt racism. It is incredibly eviscerating and exposing to the racism that exists within classical music and the prejudice that keeps musicians of color from succeeding within the orchestra. On top of all of those pressures, he's trying to figure out who the hell took his violin. This violin means more to him than he can even begin to try and explain. And the story of him and his violin, I was like, why do I care so much about Pi the Piper? I cared so much about that damn violin. That was something that I didn't expect. It is phenomenal. This is a book that I highly encourage all mystery thriller readers to read, to really, really pay attention to it and just, just enjoy it because you're in for a ride, you're in for a treat. Content warnings for extreme racism. Racism, yuck, like we don't like her. Also content warnings for families that are toxic and abusive. His family treated him like trash and I'm still not over it. Next up, we have a book that has been compared to Get Out and Mexican Gothic. It is unsettling. It is creepy. It is going to leave you with your eyes awake at night. It is one of those books where you are like, I kind of never want to trust anybody ever, ever, ever again. And that book is none other than Cherish Farah by Bethany C. Morrow. This was my first of her books and I still have not stopped fucking thinking about it. I just filmed my best books of 2022 and I completely forgot that I read this. So I need to go and add this to, to, to my little favorite books list. How can I forget you? 
I'm turning into my father. Tara Farah is Bethany C. Morrow's first thriller, and it tells the story of Farah, who is a very, very ambitious who, who was that ambitious young black girl? And her life is crumbling around her as her family loses their money and is being forced to, you know, sell their luxurious house. And so because of that, she, you know, she really begs to go and stay with her best friend, Cherish, who is a black girl who's been adopted by a white family. Now, both of these girls grew up with lavish wealth and privilege and luxury. And you definitely get to see that in the novel. I love a, a book about wealthy people of color and those dynamics. And I just, I find it really really interesting but the more time that Farah spends in this house the more she begins to change she develops a strange sickness she doesn't know what's wrong with her and everyone is acting normal and she is absolutely convinced that something is amiss this is unsettling it is a five out of five stars it was everywhere at the start of the year and it's kind of fallen off don't let it fall into the wayside this is a really, really good fucking book. It's a YA thriller, more on the adult side. There's so much to think about. I highly recommend. We have a book I've got some mixed feelings on, and that is Like a Sister by Kelly Garrett. This was one of my most anticipated releases, and a big part of that was because, oh, this cover, sweetheart, The Decadence, mm. I could kiss you, but I don't want to ruin my Fenty lip gloss. Kelly Garrett is an author that I've been dying to read because she writes these cozy beach murder mystery thrillers. She's known for her Hollywood homicide series, which again, I love that like glitzy people of color in like a glitzy glamorous kind of setting. And I love old Hollywood. I love noir. And not that it's like old Hollywood, but you know what I mean? All those things are things that I really, really enjoy. And so I was really excited to get to her first kind of more quote unquote serious thriller book and so what this is about is two sisters and they have become estranged and the protagonist gets a call one day and finds out that her baby sister I believe has overdosed on heroin. She is a struggling singer. Her sister does not believe that she would ever ever use heroin and so she goes on this mission to figure out what the hell happened to her baby sister. I listened to the audiobook which I believe was read by Bonnie Turpin and not even Bonnie Turpin could make me give this book five out of five stars. I love her as a narrator. Unfortunately I ended up giving this a three which is still a great rating. It's just that it didn't give me that oomph, that punch, that gut wrenching feeling. What? that I wanted from this book. I think I was expecting something a little bit more haunting. I would describe this as a thriller that you can read on the beach. I would describe this as something that you can read without having to worry about like getting super, super anxious and having a whole lot of tension and all of that. It really leans into the mystery and what's going on in this family versus those feelings of like fear. I don't really remember it being super action packed. I remember the action kind of coming in at the end. Comment down below because I read this at the start of the year and let me know if I'm wrong. Next up, we have a YA thriller and that is Night Crawling. This book is one that I have been so fucking excited for. You have no idea, you guys. Like I cannot wait. Akasha is standing at the door I can see her four-legged shadow and she's poking the doorknob with her giant snout because that's what she does when she wants to get let in. It's literally terrifying. Why is my dog Annabelle? Annabelle please go haunt the Conjuring franchise. Also this cover sweetheart Stunning, beautiful, beautiful. Almost makes me miss my box braids, but ha ha ha, not that much. What Night Crawling is about is, what the fuck are you about? Look, the only thing that is giving me pause about her is these deckled edges. Who authorized this? It literally doesn't even make sense for the book. I'm gonna let it go. In Night Crawling, we are following a young black woman who lives in Oakland and she is going through a lot through various circumstances that allow her to become a night crawler, which is one of those people who gets to the scene of the crime and tries to photograph it and then sells those photos to the media. You can make really good money doing night crawling, but it is very competitive, it is very rigorous, it is very challenging, and it obviously it's quite a high stress job because you're also seeing very shitty stuff. Again, with thrillers, I try and go into it knowing very little because, yo, like people be giving giving everything away in these synopsis and I just don't understand. It's like I don't need you to review the book on the jacket. I just need you to give me just the, the barest detail of what's going on. I have heard that this book is like a little bit disappointing. I didn't know that it was YA but someone told me recently and I'm even more excited about it. Then we have two books that I'm so freaking geeked about you guys. Ugh, I'm so excited. The publisher reached out and asked if I wanted to read this series and I had no idea about it and it just 
wow, I'm about to launch. I've been saying this for a year, but I'm about to launch my black thriller murder mystery series. And I'm so freaking geeked about it. I'm so geeked about it. And these might be the books that I freaking start with. And these books are A Killing Rain and A Killing Fire by Faye Snowden. I mean, ew, why are you, oh, why are you dustier than my vagina? Get off these covers. Oh, the audacity, the audacity. Wow. Whew, whew. Whew. It is 92 degrees outside, like real talk, and these books are even hotter than the weather. I am shook. I'm so freaking excited. This comes from an author who writes noir mysteries, and I, I just can't wait. Simply cannot wait. I cannot wait, you guys. I'm so fucking geek. This is about a cop with a past she can't escape and a killer who's determined to take away her future. We're following homicide detective Raven Burns, who believes she has finally escaped the crimes committed by her father, notorious serial killer, Floyd Burns, a black man serial killer? Come on. And that makes total sense why she would then grow to become a detective because she's been shadowed by that her whole life and is obviously really traumatized by that. And then, oh. Oh, yikes. When Raven shoots a teenager who points what turns out to be an unloaded weapon at her, stories about Floyd resurface. Led by wealthy socialite Hazel Westcott, the community begins to turn against Raven. This might be a really difficult book for me to read because this is a very personal and traumatizing topic for me, but this author is supposed to be really, really phenomenal at social commentary. Like this is an author that I really do trust to carry this kind of story and it's set against a lush Louisiana backdrop. It is a psychological thriller, a study in what makes us human, what makes us evil, and what makes us complicit. I am very excited about getting to these books. I know I'm gonna need some fucking time before I get to them. I unboxed this recently. I think it was in my massive book unboxing where I unboxed 30 boxes. I'll leave that in the description box below if you want to check it out. It's the hugest, hugest unboxing I've ever done on Bowtizen books. So our protagonist is a respected doctor, can't relate, and she lives in an affluent village with her husband Nathan and teaches at an elite private school. She ends up meeting Luke, who is a French painter, married to a wealthy American woman who just bought and restored a historic home. See, that was your first mistake. On the edge of her posh neighborhood. The couple has only recently arrived, but Luke is struggling with a mental disorder, and so he goes to the nearest clinic to Rachel. I'm gonna stop reading there because I have heard everything that I need to know. So pause this video and comment down below. Out of these three books, out of Nightcrawling, out of The Patient and The Faye Snowden books, which should I start with? One book that I should start with or give me like a one to three. We're gonna make this an interactive book haul. Okay, y'all gonna be participating. Oh my God, that would be so fun to do that for the rest of the video. I'm going to do these in threes. So the first book I have here is Velvet Was the Night by Silvia Moreno Garcia, which y'all know is a hit or miss author for me. I think that this cover is so beautiful. Maite lives in Mexico in 1970. She is a secretary who loves to escape into cheap comic books. And when her neighbor, uh, Leonara, I believe, who's a really beautiful artist, art student goes missing, she starts to investigate the rise in missing women. I cannot wait. I love Sylvia Moreno Garcia's writing, Gods of Jade and Shadow, which is one of my favorite books of all time. And then I read Mexican Gothic, which was a miss for me. And I'm really excited to see what about this one. And it seems like those of you who are Sylvia Moreno Garcia fans also can be like really hit or miss with her books. Did you read this? And what did you think? Next up, we have an author who I'm really, really excited to read for the second time. I read her, I think like three years ago, and I never stopped thinking about her book. And the book that I have here is Everything You Want Me To Be by Mindy Magia, who is a Minnesotan author. You're just gonna have to ignore the dog ASMR. So I actually have no idea what this is about. This is the arc and it has been out for quite a while. So this came out in 2017 and we are following Hattie Hoffman, who has spent her whole life playing many parts, the good student, the good daughter, the good girl, girlfriend when she's found brutally stabbed to death. Oh my god, I, I thought Hattie was the pr protagonist. I was like, this book is gonna be really fucking short. Oh, so she is the protagonist. That's crazy. Okay, so we are following a protagonist and throughout the story, she gets closer and closer to being murdered. What? <laughs> that sounds really good. Oh, this is gonna be a really hard three to pick between. So the next one is Hide by Kirsten White. You guys, dude, what? The publisher sent me this book, right? And I almost jumped out of my skin. Like, look at this cover. And I'm about to show you the best part. So I unboxed this in that unboxing video and it was me losing my fucking cookies. Look at, the, look at this map. Look 
at this map and it's even it's on the back map 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 oh, y'all probably know kirsten white as the author of elizabeth frankenstein i think it's like the dark descent of elizabeth frankenstein which was really really popular right around the time that i started on on book two about like a year after everybody was really obsessed and loving that book this though this yep i have to read that asap still haven't read elizabeth frankenstein one day probably if i like this it's a game where you have a group of competitors who go into this amusement park and they have to stay alive for like 24 hours and survive and they're being killed off one by one that premise that premise sounds amazing the cover jordy of jordy's um book club said that it's amazing and i want nothing more than to vanish between the pages so these are the three books that y'all have to choose from we have uh, velvet was the night by sylvia moreno garcia we have everything you want me to be by mindy magia and then we have hide by kirsten white next up we are delving into horror territory the first book that i have here was one that i got actually both of these books are books that i got from um secondsale.com which is a used bookstore and the first one is brother by anya alborn this book is one of the books that i've wanted to read the very very most since starting on booktube anya alborn is i think the number one top selling horror author on Amazon. I've read I think like two or three of her books and loved them but Brother is the book that I've always been the most interested in from her. It's the book that first like taught me who she was and I've just been so excited about it and it's set in the heart of Appalachia which like that's so cool. I've, I haven't read any books to my immediate knowledge that are set in the Appalachian Mountains. It follows a family called the Morrows who keep to themselves because they they eat people they eat people the cops won't knock on their door and girls go missing in the neighborhood and everyone's like well you know that's the morrow so we're following 19 year old michael morrow who isn't like the rest of his family and he's wanting to get out and then he meets a really pretty girl who works at a record shop and he's immediately smitten but his brother has other plans Oh, that sounds so good. And then we have Suicide Forest by Jeremy Bates, which is like a crowd favorite. Horror readers really tend to love Jeremy Bates and this seems to be his biggest book. It's like this one and Sleep Experiment are the two books that people tend to associate with Jeremy Bates. A group of very adventurous friends decide to get together and spend a weekend in the infamous Suicide Forest, a forest that is known to be haunted and full of vengeful spirits, a place where people often go to end their lives. It is Mm, it's supposed to be really really scary really creepy and that's all i need to know and i'm very 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 excited about it and finally we have as the wicked watch by tamron hall this is not a horror book although i will say this unsettled me it upset me and it terrified me the way horror is supposed to and there is racialized horror in this book but classification wise this is a thriller jordan manning is a crime reporter and she lives in chicago but when a local chicago black girl student goes missing and is found murdered and butchered brutally, Jordan sets out to figure out what happened to her and the answer is not good. This is a book that I've already read. I loved it. Five out of five stars. One of my favorites. I talked about this in my best books of 2022 video. It's something that I want everybody to read. I want everybody to read this book. Be mindful of the triggers though, like look them up. Child death, violence, gore, dismemberment, racism, grooming. There are a lot of triggers. Violence against women. It was fast paced. It was morally ambiguous. It was challenging. It was stimulating. It was scary. It was upsetting. It was thought provoking. It was well thought out. The plot was brilliant. It just was all of the things that you want in a thriller book. It's something that you're going to want to read and reread all over again. And I'm so freaking excited. So I guess that this doesn't count because I've already read it, but let's go between the actual horror book. Let's go between Anya Alborn's brother and Jeremy Bates's Suicide Forest. Which should I read first? It's actually so perfect because I have six books left. So let me grab the next three here. So the first two books are actually, to, they go together. I have E. Lockhart's We Were Liars and then I have The Family of Liars which just came out. We Were Liars is about this kind of privileged family named the Sinclairs who are liars. They are vengeful, they are ruthless, they they will do whatever the hell they need to in order to stay on top and this is a YA thriller that like in when I was in high school everybody was 
freaking obsessed with like climbing up the walls and I just never cared about it. I was never interested. The sequel just came out. It just, oh no, no, it's not the sequel, it's the prequel. So I'm guessing we're following the parents. A windswept private island off the coast of Massachusetts. Okay, I wanna go. A hungry ocean churning with secrets and sorrow 27 years before the events of When We Were Liars or We Were Liars. Comes another summer, another generation and secrets that will haunt them for decades. A story that is scandalous. Welcome back to the Sinclair family. They're always liars. I have a feeling that I'm going to hate these books. I'm not gonna lie. They seem very flat and they seem boring, but we're gonna see. We're gonna see, like they are crowd favorites for a reason, right? So I could easily be wrong. And the next book that we have here is Gone Dark by Amanda Panich. That's a really cool last name. There are no heroes when the lights go out. I'm not sure how I feel about that tagline. Ugh, but this cover though, this cover is smoke on the back, little match, good situation. Okay, so this is a YA thriller book and we're following 17 year old Zara who's escaped her father's backwoods survivalist compound five years ago. Oh my god I love cult books. I love cult books so much. She's traded crossbows and skinning for skinning for electricity and video games. Are we not gonna talk about the skinning? There's a malware attack on the country's electrical grids that cuts off the entire nation's power and she's forced to call upon the skills that she thought she'd never use again in order to survive and it involves a group of friends and they have to journey back to her father's compound. Oh, Ooh. that sounds really good. So between those two books, what should I read? The final little stack. What the fuck just flew out of there? Final little stack that we have here. The first book is going to be Howl by Sean David Hutchinson. This would be my first Sean David Hutchinson book. This follows Virgil Knox, who was attacked by a monster. Of course, no one in his claustrophobic southern town believes him. Not even after he showed up like battered and bruised and everyone was like, oh, he's been drinking, like they dismissed him. And he is certain none of those things happened. But being the new kid in town, it's hard enough to, you know, do that while also like getting people to believe in monsters. It's kind of giving werewolf vibes, you know, with Howl and all of that. So I'm really hoping it's giving like American werewolf in Paris. I'm excited. Sean David Hutchinson is known for writing really good queer literature. You know, I'm interested in giving him a shot. We have another book that seems to give like those werewolfy vibes. And that is none other than Very Bad People by Kit Frick. That's a really adorable name. This cover is pretty cool. Like I'm not gonna lie gorgeous like her green eyes are just popping love it love it love it revenge is a dangerous game so six years ago calliope Bo calliope okay ollie ollie oxen free calliope boland's mother drove the family van into a lake with her three daughters in jesus how are you gonna start with that oh my god thankfully the girls escaped but their mother drowned and the truth behind the incident remains a mystery that calliope is determined to solve she's attending an elite boarding school yes the same one that her mother previously attended she joins a secret society a coveted invitation oh my god oh my god stepping into the exhilarating world of ghosts a society of revolutionaries fighting for social justice okay i've read everything i need to know I don't even care what y'all think. Like so far, this is winning. Wow. And then the final book that we have here is Breathless by Amy McCulloch. McCulloch? McCulloch. How do you say this? I have no idea how to say this person's name, but this author is a previously YA and middle grade author. We love that. We love authors making debuts in other areas. Follows a killer. Yay, yay, yay. So we're following journalist Cecily Wong, who is in over her head. She's come to Manaslu, the eighth highest peak in the world, to interview a famous mountaineer on the last leg of record-breaking series of summits. But when one climber dies and what everyone else assumes is a freak accident, she fears their expedition is in danger. She'll have to battle more than the elements in a har harrowing fight for survival against a killer who is picking them off one by one. I love claustrophobic thrillers and I love, I absolutely adore like um, wilderness thrillers. Like I have a specific shelf devoted to those books. And so actually that is, that's really, really tough between these two. So, okay, so technically it's between Howl by Sean David Hutchinson, Very Bad Apple by Kit Frick, and Breathless by Amy McCulloch. 
what should I read first? So that is the book haul. What was the last thriller mystery horror book that you hauled and have you read it and was it worth it? If you made it this far in the video, why don't you leave an emoji that you associate with fear? Specifically an emoji that kind of speaks to your deepest, darkest fear. You don't even have to like give context. If it's like ghosts, you can put a ghost emoji. If it's nail polish, you can put a nail polish emoji, just whatever. Do whatever you guys want. But if you want more content from me, I have a Patreon where I post content exclusively for my patrons. That's going to be in the description box below, along with the videos that I've referenced and my social media links if you just want to stalk me. That's going to do it for this video. Stay safe, be good to yourselves, be good to others, and I hope to see you very, very soon.